Well, space exploration is the flavor of the season, with India also recently sending its uh, mission to the moon, the Chandrayaan. And today we have a very special person with us, somebody who's been associated with the Curiosity rover that landed on Mars in 2012. Meet Anne Devro. Uh, she's a systems engineer at NASA, and we're going to pick her brains today about everything space, about going to the moon, about going to Mars, and just how it's been for her. So to start off with, have you always been like interested in space? When did that all start? Yeah, I mean, I hate to say it because it so, super sounds like a cliche and everything, uh, but when I was a little girl, um, I grew up right near the uh, the Kennedy Space Center right. where NASA sends off its launches. I think it's, I practice this, Shri, 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 Arikota. Shri Arikota, yes. It's like the Shri Arikota of, of NASA. So that's where I grew up and, uh, you know, when I was a little kid, like the rockets would come up and, you know, my, my, in my mom's house, the, the plates would rattle and I was like, wow, you know, this is really exciting. Like, this is something I want to do. And I would look at pictures, uh, you know, of, of, you know, other planets and the stars. And, you know, at one point I wanted to be, you know, I wanted to be an astrophysicist. Like, that's what I want to do because I wanted to understand. And then and I really came to understand that I really like to build things. Um, and so, you know, as I went through my education, I decided, you know, I'm going to leave the science for other people. I'm going to read books just like you do. But my very first job at a university was to go to the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in California. And I've been there ever since a really long time. I'm sure it's a very exciting job. Yes. Um, so the Curiosity rover, I mean, that's really got my curiosity going. Uh -huh. um, what part of the whole mission were you part of. Okay, um, so uh, so like I said, I started out as a radio engineer. I've been doing radios for a long time, um, and uh, so power people know there's two ways uh, that we talk to our Mars rover. So the one is kind of the classic; it's got a big antenna, and it can go straight to Earth. So that's a long distance, you know, long haul uh, sort of link, and so it's going to be very limited data rate. I mean, just because you need a lot of power and big antenna, um, and also you can't always see the rover because you know when Mars turns around you can't see the rover anymore um, so that's one way direct to earth uh, but the other way that we talk is we have a different set of radios on a different frequency and it actually talks to the orbiters there's several orbiters now that have what we call relay radios yeah. that are specifically only to talk to things on the ground and so I built uh, me and obviously not just me me and uh, you know team people built the radios the relay radios that curiosity was going to use so you were in that control room when the curiosity room were descended yes. onto the surface. Yes. Must have been some really exciting moments there, weren't it? It was very, very exciting. I mean, one of the key uh, issues with it, as people might have remembered, um, is at that point where Mars was versus Earth, um, it's actually far enough that it takes a certain amount of time for light to travel. I mean, we right. use radio frequency, but the same thing. Um, and so it was actually 14 minutes at the time when we landed. And so the thing that was kind of creepy is whatever we would see in data in that control room was 14 minutes old and so it was weird to think like you know something bad could have happened or good I mean anything could have happened but we wouldn't know for 14 minutes yeah so you've been following India's moon mission as well the Chandrayaan uh, mission this yeah. time Chandrayaan 2 um, everything went almost textbook perfect except for the last two and a half kilometers before they got to the Isn't surface of the moon. Always, it's always good until it's bad. Like, that's just the way it works. What, what exactly do you suppose went wrong with uh, the lander? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I'll tell you straight up. I don't know. Uh, we, you know, Israel engineers are working on the data that came back. Um, my so number one, I want to say Chandrayaan one, the R two, the orbiter, very successful, did what it was supposed to do. You know, it's whatever. Yeah. The lander, you know, was experimental. It was going to a part of the moon that people haven't really gone to before. So at NASA, uh, also are there a lot of women because Chandrayaan this time was led uh, by women. I mean the. Uh, the project lead was a woman mm -hmm. um, uh, and also the chief mathematician on the project was also a woman. At NASA, is it the same? Um, so certainly when I uh, started uh, 30 years ago, um, there were not that many women. Um, you know, it was a different time. I'm not making excuses for it by any means, but it was a different time. And for a long time, you know, we talked about, I mean, of course, I mean, the United States has the same issue with India, with many countries, that we're trying to get, uh, you know, women into positions. And, you know, some of it is just, it can be true that girls decide that this is not a good job for them. It's too hard 
or you know it's not it's not feminine or it's not whatever they can get these bad impressions um, and so I think there's still a lot of that in play in the United States at least getting women into STEM in India I have been super impressed like some of the best questions of the most enthusiastic are young women you know who are asking about space is there another planet out there that we can habit at some point in time or should we just clean up the one we have well so obviously there's an answer we should clean up the one we have uh, but yeah I mean you know Mars is the one uh, that we're looking at and, and honestly when you look so not Venus for obvious reasons no and then, <laughs> too, hot. Oh, too hot yeah and then Jupiter obvious reasons uh, the moon not super interesting there's not a lot for us to work with though there is it oxygen could be a there, there's water on the way to the, on the way to mars it's exactly it it's it's like practicing on your porch before you go out so mars is the obvious place to go and i will say hopefully not because we don't learn how to take care of our planet but just because humans are an exploratory bunch you know we're curious we want to see for ourselves right. Okay, thank you so much. That was wonderful talking to you. Thank you. I really enjoyed it. Great questions. Thank you.